Since we've been um, just amazing on the street, we pray for people, uh, preaching the gospel, telling people to repent from their sins and turn to Jesus. And it's an honor to serve our King and Savior. It's an honor to go and tell people, hey, you know that Jesus has an answer. He has a solution for your problem. You know, if you turn your life to Him, like yes. my mother said here, He will give you a brand new life, an eternal life. And when you die, you're actually going to be in the presence of God. And that's the kingdom message today for, for those ones that don't believe. And He looks at us, people and men and women that don't know God, they look at us and they say, um, I don't know what you're talking about, but whatever it is, it's a feeling to me. I can embrace that. And so we then determine, like we, in, in our own um, you know, estimation, we think, well, God does love you, but if you don't repent, like you can't know Him. Like He's done everything for you. He made this beautiful earth for us, and yet we sinned. We actually moved towards God and we made the mistake and we disobeyed Him. And then He made a move towards us. And he put Jesus on the cross for us. And this is what we preach. And I say, well, whose move is it now? It's our move. It's your move. You've got to make a decision to know God. You need to come from your sin. Because if you die in that state, you're totally separated. Yeah. So I'm thankful to God yeah. that he actually chose me 15 years ago. And I was just sitting here. Mm -hmm. And so I'm sitting there. I'm like, oh, my goodness. Like, I didn't do anything except I said, God, I surrender. And when I did that, when I did that, out of my own choice, God said, I can use you. And I started going step by step, moving in the spirit, wherever he led me. And I see signs, wonders, miracles. People are getting healed. Demons are coming out of people. The, the word of God is going forth and proclaimed. And I only testified to what I hear and said, and he healed me. From back then till today, I've been healed. And I would, we are testimonies of God that we, we are healed by His stripes. We are healed because of what He done for us. And that's the message of the cross. The message of the cross is, is actually powerful. And the message of the cross is exciting. So yes. my brother yes. is saying, it's not a boring message. It's not something like, oh, I've got to go to church because um, you know someone's making me go to church. No, I'm telling you, the message of the cross is adventurous. And you've got to go on a, on, a, on a journey of a lifetime in the kingdom of God. Yeah, the kingdom of God is within us. And therefore, whatever we do, it's going to bear fruit. It's going to bring forth um, you know, good, good things. Yeah? So that's my, my uh, um, hurting, uh, breathing heart. When I'm looking around, I'm like, oh my gosh, uh, my neighbor doesn't know Jesus. How am I going to go and tell him? So I'm going to be generous. I'm going to be gentle. I'm going to be kind. I'm going to do my best. To actually win my brother and sister to come to know God. And that's the way that God actually gives us wisdom to actually love people. He doesn't want to be loved. He loved them anyway. Because our God, He's one. And He's actually the one who's causing us to be one with Him for His Son, Jesus. One more scripture I want to read from, um, because you're mentioning in, uh, about the judgment seat of Christ. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, it says here, I believe it's in verse 6. <clears throat> so we always have confidence. We know that while we live in this body, we are away from the Lord. We live by what we believe will happen, not by what we can see. So I see that we have confidence and we really want to be away from this body and be at home with the Lord. Our only goal is to always please the Lord. Whether we are living here in this body and, and, or there with Him, we must all stand before Christ to be judged. Everyone will get what they should. They will be paid for whatever they did, good or bad, when they lived in this earthly body. Amen? So the day when I, 15 years ago, when I made that decision for the Lord, I knew there's going to be rewards. And I'm like, I'm going. Lord, what do you want me to do? And I'm just like, on, on this narrow road, looking for ways to actually obey my master, do what he tells me to do. <coughs> Feed this body to submission and don't, don't go after his lust, but actually be led by the Spirit and having my eyes fixed 
on Jesus and this, this part of the world is going bad and this part of the world is actually suffocating but I want my eyes are fixed on Jesus. He's the author and finisher of my faith. I want to finish the race because many prophets went before me and disciples and they went through great things. Some of them were persecuted, some were beaten with a rod, some were sword in half, some were crucified upside down, others were tortured in prison. And for us today to know this message, there's actually a job for us to do, is actually to be more like Jesus on this earth. Yes. And it's like Amen. us, we must decrease that he may increase inside of us. We must pick up our cross daily and follow my master. Do what he did. What did he do? He says, I'll give you a new commandment now. Love one another just as I loved you. So my friends, if he was the son of God, he's the only one that could know the first the first commandment. The commandment was to love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your strength and everything that's good. Jesus came and said, I give you a new commandment to love one another as I have loved you. Wow. Love is an actual word. It's like, it's not like I love you, Michael, and then I'm like, in my, in my own private time, I'm going to speak negatively about him. Yes. Did you see Michael? He wears earrings, he's this and that. He sometimes watches Netflix. And, no, I love him just the way God made him. Because he designed him and he had a purpose and a plan for him. Yeah, he may not look all perfect at the start and none of us will. And probably none of us will ever look perfect in this side of heaven. You know what I mean? But we've got, we've got the perfect uh, creator, one who sees us through the eyes of Jesus. So my friends, my, my, my brothers and sisters, the only thing I want to spur you on is actually to know Jesus as your Lord and Saviour. Yes. To really make Him the, the leader of your life. Let Him lead you. Let Him take you on a journey of a lifetime. Because there is a, a, a world out there that needs to yes. see you in action and to testify, to proclaim the message of God, to prophesy, to evangelize and to teach people how to live by, uh, according to the will of God. And we have this in our, in our disposal, we, we got the weapon of all weapons. And I was listening to a message this morning, and um, the, the, the preacher was saying, How can we cultivate a, a, a way to bring the presence of God? Not just we come to church and oh, I'm going to get a bit of presence of God, and I can't wait for the church to finish because I'm out of here because we live in this world and it's all tainted by sin. But we think that we can come to church and live holy, put on our best clothes, and lift up holy hands. But part of me is like, I'm still tainted, I've still got this stuff. We need to cultivate the presence of God always in our lifetime. In Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we look for a devoted time where we can put an hour, two hours, and spend time reading the Word. Put on gospel music and sing. Sing your heart out to God. Thank you, Jesus, that you died on the cross. Just sing to Him and open the Word again. Read yeah, it. Amen. Meditate on it. Live it. What is God telling me here? What can I action in my life? What goals or how can I walk this out? Ask God. Tell, tell Him, what do I need to do, Lord? And as you cultivate that presence of God, you don't have to wait to come um, on Sunday to, to worship God. You're already worshiping God. Yes. You're living in the Spirit. You're living in a life that God is going to So you're not ashamed when they're going to church, when they're outside the church. You are living for Christ. Christ yes. is the hope of glory. You've been crucified with Him, and therefore you don't want to live, but Jesus lives yes, inside you. Amen. And that's what I like, my brothers and sisters. They come here, they're already determined. We're going to praise and worship God because I already praised and worship God today six times. And I love King David. He, he actually worshiped God how many times a day? How many times a day he praised God? He spent time to God. And I thank you, Jesus, because you are calling us to worship you in the presence of God that we'll spend that time with talking to you because you are the royal priest. You called us yes, to be kings and priests as well, Father. So in that, that reason, God, our life is, is actually yours. We don't even belong to ourselves. This world, it is dying. But Lord, the kingdom of God is alive and it's actually yes. forever more living, God. And it's never ending, God. So let your people, God, hear this Hear this one thing about you, that the Lord our God, He is one, and He's given us a new commandment to love one another, just as you have loved us, God, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Amen.